What about the situation of women in rural Afghanistan, in these communities that are affected? Uh, if I can start with the big project in Ainak, you'll see women's ward is very shrinked. You know, the four walls of the uh, household is their ward, you know. The best interaction the women in that area have is, you know, when they get water or when they take the animals for grazing, that's their only interaction. And that interaction is limited to women, you know. It, you know, they don't have other other spaces where they can have exchanges with people to learn, bring in those ideas home, and then you know, work on them and 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 uh, see the world uh, from a different angle. And uh, I think uh, you can squarely blame it a lot on the conservative nature of the uh, society there and the culture. So customary laws, you know, limit women's uh, interaction with outside world. I think it's slightly different um, in Ajigak, where I, uh, I've been going and meeting people. Though women in Ainak also go and work along with their men, you know, in field. But in uh, Ajigak, I think, you know, uh, girls go to school. Uh, women are open to this idea of, you know, going and working uh, outside home, like in clinic, the only clinic that was there. There were some um, uh, women, you know, volunteers who were like going and getting training and then taking medicine to distribute it among people. So if, if you go to that area, very remote area, you, you'll see that these kind of activities really help, you know. Uh, a woman would find it very easy, you know, to discuss her problems with with another woman rather than uh, you know discussing them with a male doctor or health worker. Um, uh, yes, uh, there, uh, despite the fact that there's a difference, you know, yet their word is very limited, you know. And I think um, projects, especially mining projects, can can actually bring them out of their uh, houses and, you know, to have a much better interaction with word and, you know, and bring in ideas for change, bringing in ideas for improving their lot and, and you know, standard. And I, if I can add this, you know, if we have the right kind of vision, if we have the right kind of uh, uh, projects uh, like vocational training for women, and you bring them out, you know, very, uh, without, you know, challenging the norms and in, in the in the society there and the conservatism you can actually bring changes without you know spending a lot of money and this change will be very gradual without challenging the dominance of male in the society we've heard a lot of examples of the so-called resource curse especially um, from countries in africa and also other parts of the world um, do you think that afghanistan is in a similar situation or um, is there even a possibility of utilizing resources to stabilize the country? Yeah, well, I'll have to answer. One yes and another no. If we, uh, like, we've been trying to see, like, we've been realistically looking at the natural resources as a sub-oil capital that would require a lot of money to pull it out and then uh, develop the sector, transfer this underground uh, wealth into uh, cash and, and you know that cash uh, has to be used you know in a manner that we generate sustainable source of revenue not only for the um, uh, current generation but uh, for the future generation so that there has to be generational equity and, and uh, use of that and generating enough money for the future generation so that they can also benefit from it uh, yes it can uh, bring peace uh, like for example I tell you this government in Afghanistan is very weak it cannot, like, if the donors are not there, they cannot, like, uh, provide services to its citizen. We have been talking about the public good. And the clinic, the education, roads, uh, drinking water, medicine to, to the people. Uh, let me give you an example, a solid example of a survey we did in Ajigak. You know, most of the households, that the earning that they have is spent on healthcare or education. Because the state is missing from those spa uh, spaces. Now, if we, uh, I mean, the government of Afghanistan commits a company to spending some money on the developmental projects, I think it can be a good partner with, with private sector, you know, to bring those, uh, I mean, so centers for delivering services to people and bringing citizens closer to to the uh, state so that trust is the, which is missing could come and we'll we'll find our way to a stability 
the source class, yes. It's a major uh, concern to us, looking at, you know, how uh, contracts are allocated, given to politically connected people, where uh, the state is not allowed to give, collect its dues, the rent that, uh, you know, a company or many companies owe to the state, are not given to, to, uh, to the state, and then uh, some policies are twisted, you know, to make sure that the politically connected families and people are kept happy. And uh, whereas um, people who are not very politically connected and, and are made to pay a lot of money in bribe, and uh, we are like set on a highway to, to resource cars, uh, in absence of um, strong legal framework, strong state institutions, you know, to implement those uh, laws and regulations and collect the money that uh, uh, companies owe to the state, uh, I think uh, chances of resource cars are looking very high. Is there anything that you would actually like the international community to do more? No, absolutely. The law has to be subjected to a more uh, in-depth analysis uh, to take into account, you know, uh, you know, the impact of the law on local communities, uh, and you know, create bring in provisions or include amendments into the law so that the interests of, of people who are very vulnerable are in, uh, protected. And they are not unnecessarily, you know, in the name of uh, development, uh, subjected to, you know, some sort of atrocities or uh, excesses. So, what are the plans of civil society? Uh, how how do you want to continue to work on this issue? Uh, I think uh, our focus is on le good legal framework. We should have some doc document as a reference point in case we disagree. We and the state, I mean, civil society in the state uh, disagree. We have to have reference documents you know, where you can go and see the commitment of state towards uh, uh, towards its society in the development of the sector. And then the state institution will have to work in a very, very transparent manner, you know, working towards the stability of social contract and stability of social contract would require them, you know, to serve the citizens. And not serve only the citizens, you know, I think the revenue that comes from, from the sector uh, has to be uh, uh, spent in a manner that uh, can, you know, increase the choices of people, provide goods and services to people, and uh, and the additional uh, money that's uh, there. Like, if I can take a step back and say, okay, the creation of uh, special account for revenue from the mining sector, and who should have the authority, you know, to spend that, and how do we spend it, where do we spend it, to make sure that we we diversify uh, sufficiently enough so that when mining gets over, we should have alternative source of income and, and uh, there has to be an economy independent of uh, the mining sector. Because mining is not uh, a forever thing.